And joining us now, Jen Psaki, former White House Press Secretary, of course, in the Biden administration and MSNBC host. Stephanie Cutter, the former deputy campaign manager to the Obama 2012 campaign. And Robert Gibbs, former White House Press Secretary in the Obama administration. So I can't think of more political expertise in one space here. Jen, you were part of this administration. Now, what Shaq is reflecting is a progressive community, Madison, mm -hmm. Wisconsin, which is not even reflective of all of Wisconsin, as we know. It's a very diverse state. What does President Biden have to say tonight to try to address both of those audiences or the multiple audiences politically? Well, as Stephanie and Gibbs can all uh, speak to as well, I mean, writing these speeches is one of the biggest challenges you have in the White House. It's so important, but it's also hugely challenging because you're packing about 50 pounds of ideas and policies and contrasts into a one-pound bag. I think Aisha was the woman who was giving her thoughts on what she wanted to hear tonight, and I think she'll be happy, because I, what I understand from White House officials, my former colleagues I've spoken to, is that the president's going to speak to people who feel invisible, who don't feel heard, who don't feel seen by Washington. He's going to speak to his fight for them and how he's going to continue that moving forward. And telling that story and not getting into a data listicle of all the things he's accomplished for the whole speech, in my view, is exactly what he should be doing. So, Stephanie, our latest poll shows that only 36 percent of Americans approve of President Biden's handling of the economy, which is pretty startling considering the recent numbers and the way the economy is mm -hmm. so far, so far avoided the recession cliff. Uh, but they're just not feeling it like that woman in, you know, yeah. in so Wisconsin. So I think it's, there's still an enormous amount of economic anxiety out there as a result of going through COVID, hitting um, record inflation, prices are coming down. If you look at the metrics, the metrics show an economy that is, um, is growing and booming. booming. Um, but as my former colleagues uh, know, uh, both uh, Robert and Jen, there is a big difference between listing out statistics that aren't attached to people. You have to relate to people, and there's nobody better than President, uh, President Biden, was it Obama, <laughs> President Biden, uh, in talking about what it's life, like to live in middle class, what it's like to be uh, in the working class um, and living paycheck to paycheck. I think you'll hear him talk about how a job is more than a paycheck um, and uh, listen how not just the programs he's already passed, but his uh, job is not do the job is not done mantra about what more needs to be done to build the economy, as he says, from the bottom up and the middle out. So, Robert Gibbs, this is going to be Joe from Scranton. Yeah, I hope so. If that's if we get Joe from Scranton, then it'll be a good night for Joe Biden and mm -hmm. likely a good night for the American people. Uh, I think the voter that Shaq talked to wanting to hear more about uh, how life can be better and more affordable for the middle class is exactly what Joe Biden needs to talk about. Look, this is an incredibly important moment. There's probably not a bigger audience that Joe Biden is going to speak to uh, this year. He does it in front of a now Republican-controlled House, so he needs to set up this implicit contrast and this story that he's going to start to tell and continue to tell over and over again this year. And let me just point out one thing that I think Jen said that, that is really important, and that is you're at this stage in constructing a speech where everybody is calling, everybody is emailing, everybody is texting to get their issue and their line in the speech. And I didn't always win these fights. <laughs> Stephanie and Jen didn't always win these fights uh, when we were doing States of the Union. But what happens is you can end up with a lot of words and not saying anything. I think that would be a, a really bad thing for this White House, a thematic, a story an outline of where this president wants to take this country over the course of the next two years and set out that vision for what you're going to hear in the reelection. That's the most important thing, not measuring it by minutes or words. And Jen, you sat down with former speech writers in a special State of the Union preview streaming on Peacock. So what did they tell you? Yeah, well, first, we talked a lot about the process and the, what Robert Gibbs just mentioned, right. which is that at this point in the process, everybody wants their idea and their thing in the speech, and you have to kind of be the protector of the story. They also talked about speaking in moments of trauma. And unfortunately, every president, including former President Obama, who we all worked for, has been in those moments, Andrea. And, you know, President Biden is giving this speech tonight, uh, weeks after the death of Tyree Nichols, weeks after multiple 
multiple mass shootings across the country. Uh, I know from speaking to former colleagues, he's going to address those uh, those tragedies. But it's also about having that empathy, exuding that. When Joe Biden is at his best, it comes out of his pores. So that was one of the things they talked about. And, and I think it will be a good night for him if he does that tonight as well. And Stephanie, there's something unique to this president, which the New York Times wrote about on the front page today, Katie Rogers, that he's the first president who had a stuttering issue. Mm -hmm. And how does he cope with that in speeches? He has all these mechanisms. Yeah, I think, um, I, I, you know, I grew up with a member of my family who had a very bad stutter. Every person who uh, try, it deals with a stuttering issue has their own tricks. Um, and certain letters you don't start um, sentences with, uh, construction of sentences, things like that. I think at this point in President Biden's life, he's got those tricks down um, and uh, he's able to give a speech uh, in a way that works for him. So um, I'm looking forward to watching him. And Robert Gibbs, this is going to be a debut for Kevin McCarthy, sitting on that stage next to the vice president, behind the president. Uh, he's already said you're not going to see him tearing up the speech, which was one of Nancy Pelosi's most dramatic <laughs> acts. But uh, what's his demeanor going to be? Well, I think people will be watching. Look, one of the things that we <laughs> spectators love to do in this State of the Union is who stands up and when? Uh, what are the things that get bipartisan reaction? What are the things that, quite frankly, ought to get bipartisan reaction? M my hunch is that one of the things we'll be watching for, I have no doubt that President Biden is going to outline the next set of steps that this country and our allies must take in defeating Russia in Ukraine. And I think a lot of eyes will be on Kevin McCarthy and others in the Republican Party to see what happens uh, when those lines come up. Well, in the guests, one among the guests of the vice of the excuse me, the first lady uh, up in that gallery, as well as Tyree you know, Nichols' family, is Natalia Makarova, the ambassador from Ukraine, who has done such an incredible job here in Washington, in really understanding how to bring people behind this this horrific war. So that is certainly going to be one of those moments. Stephanie Cutter, Robert Gibbs, Jen Saki, thanks to all of you.